Oh, hey y'all. So in this video, I'm just going to go through what I bought at the Botanical Expo, change their substrates, assess for pests, and we're still gonna throw them in the box. They still don't have the beneficials. I ordered them too late, so they're gonna come next week. But yeah, I thought I'd share the process here. So the bin is here. Again, if I get a plant, I always assume that there's pests. Always, always, always just so you could take appropriate action. A lot of the time I do put a, um, a sticky trap in case like the plants in an aeroid mix have fungus gnats. And looking, I don't see anything. What is the least messy situation? Man, I'm so scared of this air plant. I don't think I need to do anything with the air plant for now. I kind of want to take the anthuriums out of like their moss. You know, I thought about what I was going to do I think I'm gonna put them straight into pawn and then throw them back in here. So let's do one by one. So let's do the GG first. I swear this video is gonna be so short, but the time that I look at it, like the footage is probably gonna be like three hours because I just pull up my uh, microscope and I just take a look at what's going on here. I look for any like damage from any previous pest situations like spider mite damage and thrip damage kind of look. Those are pretty easy to spot like any small dots on like the foliage is usually associated with the spider mites for thrips, silver streaking as well as yellowing leaves is a sign as well. And sometimes you could be so careful and assess like all you want, but really they hide. Like thrips lay eggs in the foliage and you can't even see that. In my experience, you can see spider mite eggs under a microscope. And so that one is easy to detect. And then every time you see damage on a leaf, um, there's a chance that pests can lay eggs there or live there. That's a very common space. I went through all the leaves. I really only saw that one thing with the thrips. I didn't see any spider mite situations, any mealies, any scale or anything. Do y'all feel this way too? Like every time I look for pests, I get so itchy. <laughs> I don't know, I just feel like they're on me, which like they might be, but. <laughs> so any squishy brown roots I cut and it's usually generally easy to identify with anthuriums just because they're very tuberous. You compare them to other aeroids and other plants. They're cute. Um, another thing, you can see that there's four leaves. I don't like keeping that many. Just for like rehab purposes, like I just feel like the plant has to deal with so much when it comes to uh, channeling the energy to every different part of the plants. Like it needs to work on root growth, it needs to work on maintaining the foliage of the plant. I usually cut just so there's two leaves left so I'm gonna cut this one too. And so we're left with these two beautiful leaves. Uh, I'm looking at the roots they look okay Then I'm just in the sink giving it a good rinse. Okay where are you at? There you are. <laughs> Okay, second one. This one has four. Y'all saw that there were two other ones that were like dying. I'm just gonna continue looking. Sometimes there's pieces of like perlite, pieces of moss, pieces of an aeroid mix. Um, it can trick you into thinking it's something. And obviously like other cosmetic damage. Don't see anything on that one. I like checking the foliage during the day because nothing beats the natural light from the window. Who's this patient? There are some moments where I just introduce generalist bugs and isolate them for like a month and keep monitoring just when like there are moments where I don't have time. Okay, nothing for this one, which is great. So I'm just gonna take it out of, oh, one of the leaves fell, okay, my bad. Maybe we'll see what's happening. Cause remember the other two leaves in my botanical explo, explo, blog. They already fell out. I'm thinking because there was a moment where everything just dropped, maybe things broke on some of these plants. Okay, this root system looks good. Um, there's actually not a lot of like dead roots that I can see. Ooh, and there's new ones. Okay, good. See, I'm worried about the GG because there's no new roots coming and like the root system was a bit smaller, but there's some new uh, aerial roots here, which is fantastic. I'm just looking. I'm getting rid of the oldest leaf here, but 
look over here this is what i like seeing look at that juicy new root over there there's another one and there's another one on the other side fantastic i like seeing that because i've said this before sometimes even though you have this healthy root system well it appearing healthy we don't actually know how healthy it is we don't know what substrate it came from and so we don't really know how it's going to deal with transferring to different substrates Okay, putting it in the cup with the GG. I'm gonna put this one first. Oh, I really wanna cut the, the lower leaf, but I don't know. She's so pretty. I'm gonna put this off to the side and then we'll continue. I wanna look at the Pappy Lux. I am so excited for this one. Okay, baby leaves dead okay there's new aerial roots i think i feel comfortable and this might be the wrong decision again there are new roots that are ready and every time i see a lot i usually just feel okay putting it into whatever substrates i want so i'm gonna keep it to two leaves right over here see and this is why i like baby plants you can really just look at the leaf there's less surface area <laughs> And y'all listen, I don't get mad if I find pests, because pests are hard. They are sneaky, and honestly, I don't think it's a reason to just get angry. I don't know what that is. It looks like moss, actually. <sighs> yeah, everything's going <sighs> off when I blow it, which is a good sign. Pests like to latch onto the leaf, so they won't move if I like blow on it. What's everyone watching? I went on this real binge when I was like on break of a lot of Marvel stuff that I didn't get a chance to watch. I'm not like a diehard Marvel fan. I do enjoy the movies and the shows. So I watched Falcon and the Winter Soldier. What's the other one? Oh, Loki. Wow, I'm gonna be honest. I was never a fan of Loki in like the movies. I just didn't like his character, I guess. <laughs> But that's probably one of my favorite movies. I mean, not movies, shows. Cause like my favorite was WandaVision, love WandaVision. But I think Loki might like replace her, I don't know. Okay, so you can see the roots there and then the roots up here that I was talking about. So I'm gonna make sure I submerge that in pond cause that's what I'm gonna put them in. Uh, but I didn't see anything with that one. So we'll put that off to the side. I'm probably just gonna do the pond ones first, I think, which is like the majority of them. But let's do these Hoyas. So because I have Hoya, is i'm probably going to introduce california kiss just because of the flat mite situation i find that those are like the hardest to look for they're just a lot smaller than the other bugs and so what i do with flat mites i really just hold the microscope in one area and then i just like stare at my screen for a few moments okay so i checked that <laughs> These are cute. These are cute. Your Wilbur Graves is good. Okay, Marnie, I swear. I am so happy that you introduced me to this Hoya. Like, thrilled. These are so pretty. I'm just, I don't know, I'm so in love with it. I just didn't see the texture. Like I said before, the texture in the leaves is everything. Okay, I always get scared. Hoyas that sometimes have like more juvenile stems? And like, this is not juvenile because you can see that they're like a lot lower in the plant. But sometimes I feel like they're just gonna rot. I think I'm just gonna throw them into pond. Okay, yeah, nothing. Okay, we're gonna put you in pond. Okay, Forgetii Lux is still a baby, y'all. Roots are tiny. Um, so I'm gonna keep this one in moss. And see, this is great. Small, small plants. Sorry guys, I really don't know what I'm like, keeping in because this is gonna be like a long process and it's pretty repetitive so okay who do i have left we have probably my favorite that i got oh my god it is so pretty okay what i'm gonna do don't yell do that and then i'm gonna cut these two stems so one cutting here beautiful i'm gonna propagate it and then i'm gonna keep this as is 
I don't know. I like it when I actually prefer getting Hoyas that only have like one leaf or two. I think it's just easier. Um, obviously, I'm not complaining that there's like another cutting that I could like grow another plant. Oh, it's so beautiful. I'm going to put this one into pond though. Or can I just like push this in? And again, just looking around. You know what? I think I want to put this one in Lekka. Is that a bad decision? I just know it's going to do so well in Lekka. Okay, moving on. Obovada. Uh, it's in an air raid mix, and like, y'all know how I feel about air raid mixes. This is a great air raid mix, though. There's like a ton of coconut husk, there's bark, there's perlite, there's Lekka. Amazing for Hoyas. I know I'm washing down the leaves and I know that's really, you know, something that you should do when it comes to pests and trying to like get rid of a lot of them. It doesn't solve the problem though. Um, I just dropped it. Oh my god. I've looked at situations where I've had really bad spider mites on my plants, really bad thrips on my plants, and I've used like high pressure water to try to like wash them off and like a lot of the time they don't come off they're like really latched on to the foliage and i'm not saying that like it doesn't work at all like it does work like some do wash away but like thrips for example thrips have i want to say a tool <laughs> <laughs> they they basically like inject their eggs in the foliage so and when i had my whole spider mites infestation i didn't wash off any of my plants i just introduced the beneficials and it was funny because the purse persimilis i don't know i still can't say it those ones they eat the spider mite but they don't eat them in their entirety so their corpses stay on the plant so a lot of the time after when i was checking you would just see corpses of spider mites on my plants and like i just left them <laughs> this kind of sounds gross i'm sorry <laughs> And a lot of people cut roots off of like Hoyas, for example, that were in an arid mix if they're transferring it to like a semi-hydroponic um, setup or either Lekka or Pond. It's because a lot of the time, for the majority of the time, those roots will rot. They're just not used to Pond or Lekka. And also the shock of it all. I like to keep them on just because there is a chance that there are a few root systems that will be totally fine. But I have cut off entire root systems before when it comes to Hoyas because like I said, Hoyas will root anywhere in the stem. It is like fantastic. Okay, let's do taking out the Raphidophora Megasperma. These roots are amazing. You should kind of zoom in. Look at this root system. Are you kidding? <gasps> okay. Do y'all remember the days like early in the plant craze, like 2019, 2018? It was so hard finding like pumice or like lava rock in like your garden centers, like Home Depot and stuff. Like they would only sell perlite. And so you'd have to use so much perlite with like whatever like potting mix you would buy from there, which like wasn't well suited for aeroids. I like hate soil, y'all. I know I should be okay with it, but I just, I don't like growing plants in it. Oh, guys, do you find that like passive hydroponic mediums like pond or leca, do you think that you guys prefer it? So the root system looks fantastic, but the biggest thing is look at these new roots up there. So, um, oh my God, I almost like, <laughs> I didn't know where the chair was. Okay, if anything, like you need to try your very best to like submerge those new aerial roots because every time you do a transfer, there is a chance that the entire root system will just totally rot. And a lot of people have messaged me saying, hey, I transferred like, it's most often like a Monstera Thai constellation into Lekka and like the whole root system rotted. Just make sure, like this is what I recommend, make sure there's like another node at least. Don't limit yourself to like whatever root system it has already. Just give the best chance possible for the plant. Because these roots, they're not acclimated to anything, the, the new ones. Once they touch like whatever substrate they're against or in, they'll acclimate to that, that medium. Obviously if you give it a ton of light, and I think that's the main thing of why people's plants don't do well during the transfer, I firmly believe that people still don't give their plants enough light when it comes to the transfer. I know Monsteras, for example, 
philodendrons they don't necessarily need a ton of light you know once they're acclimated but that acclimation process the transfer the rooting process they need a lot of light so just do the lighting the increased light in the beginning once you see roots that's when you can move it away from the grow light slowly not rapidly okay i think this is good <laughs> This silver hero, y'all. Oh, so pretty. I'm just cleaning my sink. Don't want anything big to go down the drain there. Okay, so clean out this bin and I'm gonna put them back. I'm debating just because the anthurums are so tall, like, should I do it this way? I think I'm gonna do it this way. Hopefully they'll all fit that way. Okay, let's start off with the one I'm keeping in moss, which is the Forgetty Eye Lux. That's like, so, so i feel like i'm gonna kill it so there she is okay i'm just putting it in a cup with moss here she is oh my god so cute we're gonna put you there uh okay actually let's do the taller anthuriums and we're gonna do pawn so I think I'm gonna put them in just these dilly containers for now, and then I'm gonna transfer them out once I see new root growth. Okay, this is the uh, GG. I just put enough to cover the roots, and I'm just gonna fill it with water for now. I'll change to nutrient solution when I need to. Okay, and then we're gonna do the other one. Whew, yeah, okay. I'm like thinking, I, I don't think I have a big enough pot right now, so we're just gonna do this for now. Hopefully this is okay. Are the roots? Yeah, I always hit like below the root system. Okay. Okay, who else is going into pawn? Should I try Syndapsis in pawn? I think I'm gonna, mm, yeah, I think I'm gonna do it. I don't know. That kind of scared me. Okay, let's do these other anthuriums. <laughs> Y'all, I haven't bought any plants in like so long. This is very exciting. Like I bought a lot of plants and I said before, like my goal was to support, you know, all the local people. But yeah, I, I don't know. Now I'm in this like mood where I want to get more, which is like so annoying because I'm so worried about this Hoya, the Kumingiana. Please, <laughs> please. Okay, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut the lower leaves here, these two, just because I want like the best chance for it to root because I'm scared. Or should I? I don't know. Okay, I think I'm just gonna do it with one of them because this one has so many leaves compared to the other one. Let's just cut those off. Perf, so now the stem is much longer and we're just gonna put it in. Cute. And then... Okay, I don't know. Here it is. It's so cute. Okay, some water. And I'm going to keep this one super wet. So it's at the top just because it has no roots. Okay, now finally the syndapsis. I think we're going to go with pond. And I'm just going to put a moss pole on it. I know this looks like it's going to be too small, but because there's only one plant, I think I'm okay with it. And like it could just root in the moss if it gets too full down here anyhow. Just gonna put the cutting in. Yes, that's okay. And then I'll put moss on the moss pole. Cute. Okay, very cute. Let's put some moss. Okay, here she is. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for that. Okay, can you fit in here? Mm, it's gonna be tight. Now we're gonna do the Leca plants, Hoyas, and then let's start with the Raphidophora Megasperma. Just seeing how big these roots are and just knowing from like my experience with the Pertusa, I think we're gonna go this route. And I'm gonna just put the plant in first. Then I'm just grabbing some Leca and just putting it in. Okay, all the, oh my God, all the light is dropping. Okay, 
I'll just add uh, plain water just until I have nutrient solution. We'll see what happens. Okay, so with the Wilbur Graves, we're gonna just put it in a cup just until there's roots and then I'll transfer it into a bigger pot with probably a trellis. Okay, and really, I'm putting it pretty high just because there's no roots. Perfect. I might do the same with the obovada. Maybe I should do it with all of them. Plus, I do have more leka. I even tried. Oh, I do. Okay, we're good. So some leka, obovada. And now for this one, I feel bad disturbing it. I think it'll do really well in Lekka though. I really believe that. So I think, let me uh, take it out of the substrate. So I took the majority of stuff off. Um, it's fine. I'm going to keep some pieces of bark on it. But look at these roots. I'm not too worried about this one because it was in a substrate that was similar. the cutting and the rooted plant. And again, we're just gonna fill it with water. Okay, I might put two bins like this on top of each other. And then, so maybe I'll put all the Hoyas in here. So we'll put you, Ovovada. So I have them all in here. I'm gonna keep it standing and then I'm probably gonna put a grow light above. And then I'll just do the same with this. I know I didn't address the air plant, I just need to do research before I do anything with it. So I'm just gonna put it on top of one of the pins. <laughs> I'm just too afraid, cause I know when they get wet specifically, I don't know if that part is called the crown area and they warn me about it. Like if you wet it, it's too damp around it. Like you'll get rot from the inside, similar to like orchids. And yeah, we'll see what happens. Oh, hey y'all, I am back. It's been six weeks, I think. And I guess this is an update of how they're all doing. Um, I do wanna address the plant that did not make it. And I know it's totally my bad and it's my fault. The Hoya obovada, the variegated splashy plant. I'm so sad. I'm actually really sad because it's one of the Hoyas I was super excited about when it comes to growing it. And it's totally my fault. It is because I think I mentioned in the video that some people or most people usually cut off the roots of the Hoya completely if they're transferring it from like a soil or an arid mix to Lekka or Pond. And so if I could go back in time, I think I would cut off all the roots. Um, but I think the main reason, and this is why every time I propagate or transfer plants, I always say blast the plant with light and more so Hoyas, they already need a lot of light. And so if they're going to shock, if they need to build more roots, then you really, really, really need to give it a lot of light. So I'm saying this because I've kept the bins in my living room and I know in the clips I said I was gonna put a grow light over top. I never did that. We've had this like run of sunny days here in Toronto. And because this is a west facing window, for the majority of the plants here, I thought that was gonna be enough. Clearly not for that Hoya. Um, so I think those are the two factors. It was coming out of soil, the roots rotted, that already existed. And the second thing, I don't think I gave it enough light. It might have to do with the amount of hours of light and also the intensity. So it's okay, one day I'll get another one. And yeah, again, I'm here to share with y'all my mistakes. The amount of light is a huge factor when it comes to rehabbing plants, propagations, and that's why I emphasize it all the time. And so, yeah, okay, let's continue with the bad. <laughs> But I actually haven't looked at this plant in a while and she's not here because I kind of wanted to monitor her more and put her under grow light. So let me just grab her. My Amazon Night Fox, it dropped all of its leaves. So I'm now thinking because at the expo there were two yellow leaves, I think the plant was already in shock because it was literally like day three, day four after the transition, they completely just freaked out and dropped off all the leaves. I still kept her in pond. I actually pulled it out at that moment. The roots were actually good. And so I was like, okay, like, let's just keep it under a grow light. But this looks awful. Do you see this? That's what's left. And I know this happens a lot. Um, and I know I should have maybe kept an eye. <laughs> okay, hold on, y'all. Hold on, I don't like it. 
Okay, here's the thing. The roots look pretty good. I never trust visual, but I mean, it does help when you're kind of assessing at first. I like feeling the roots. So, I mean, do you know what? The majority of these roots, they feel good. They feel good. There's some maybe small ones like this one. I don't know if you can see. Oh, pawn everywhere. Like these roots didn't even root. I'm actually shocked. Am I just going to put it back? It doesn't look like the main growth point is gonna push out new growth. So not dead. The stem isn't squishy. This, <laughs> neglect the house. Foliage wise, there were some that died off. She still looks okay, but like really air plants can trick you because they generally look fine for so long. I, I've only like done like a watering or like a submersion in water twice in the past six weeks. There have been times where it's dried out completely. But for example, the last time I did it was yesterday. So in general, she still looks okay, but I, I know I should probably do more. But yeah, we're gonna keep trying. We're gonna keep trying. Okay, and the rest, I actually have not looked at them in uh, maybe three weeks. <laughs> so literally they've been mostly untouched. <laughs> There's so much algae, oh my God. Okay, starting off with the Caracia. Caracia, I don't know the word still. Doing well, see this new growth point? So that is very exciting. She looks a little dehydrated and I'm feeling the leaves feel dehydrated just because I don't think there's barely any water. However, look at the roots. Look at these. So root wise, it's good. I'm not going to disturb it. And I feel the leaves, they feel good. Let's look at the Wilbur Graves because she's doing her thing. Um, no new leaves, but you can see. Look at these roots. Amazing. And then these new growths on both of them. Look at that. So again, this one started out with zero roots and now she has roots. Um, I'll transfer her and then I just can't wait. I cannot wait for this one. Blooming Gianna has lots of algae. So you can see the roots. And again, these ones were not rooted um, in pond. Look at that. And there's definitely been new growth, but I think it was slamming against the edge of the container. All right, look how pretty. Look at these. Oh, so pretty. Okay, so that's good. The Pappy Lux. Here's a new leaf. I'm always scared when I have young anthuriums, but that is a new root right there. Again, in pond, another one here. And then this is the new leaf. So cute. Hello. That's so weird. I still see beneficials. It's been six weeks and I could see it's cucumber. Cucumber is the one. <gasps> Did they like make children? Okay, and then <laughs> I'm scared. I'm scared. Oh, there's a root. Okay, this is the Forgetii Lux, the one that was in um, moss. So she had these two leaves. And then, okay, I don't know if I want to move her. I do see a root. Do you see that? That's definitely new. That wasn't there before. Uh, yeah, I don't want to touch it. I'm not going to touch it. So that's the first bend. So yay. Now, I guess there's three more. Two of them are on moss poles and one is that other anthurium. So I have them over here. Um, let's take a look. I don't know when the last time I opened this. Don't die, I'm sorry. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, okay. Oh. Okay, there's a gigantic root. Raphidophoras, y'all. This is the Megasperma. I think I cut maybe a couple leaves. I'm not sure. But look at this juicy root. So it hasn't pushed out any new leaves, but I could kind of, oh, there is a new one, look. Did you Kevin zoom in? Look at that tip, that's new. I'm just inspecting again. I think I said I was gonna do Californicus, but I ended up going with the Cucumurus. <laughs> I don't know. I ended up buying those. Uh, they cover thrips and spider mite. And also I'm pretty sure they do varieties of broad mites, but I'm not quite sure. It's weird, a lot of the um, aerial roots didn't activate. But thank God I had the moss pole. Cause look, look at the one right over there. It didn't do anything. And then that one totally did it. Oh, and there's another one on the other side. Oh, look, when I see the branching, do you see the branching y'all? Oh, hello. Okay, I'm so excited. The syndapsis, which is the other one on the moss pole, did root more. Can't see it in the moss pole. Over there, there's a new root in the moss pole. And then this is the new leaf. <laughs> she kind of looks really weird and wonky. Um, and then she attached again at that node. She's secure there. I'm just probably gonna have to guide it this way because she's going that way right now. 
reservoir is completely dry. Oh my god, I feel bad. It's good that Pond really holds on to moisture. Okay, and the last one. Hello. I don't think this one had like root or like a big enough root system. So remember she had these two leaves. So this one you can see kind of going. That one over here. Look at this. Are you kidding me? That is beautiful. Um, root wise, you can see it's like looping around. Do you see that from there to there? Look at that root over there. And then you can see it over here. Look at that. Look at this, look at all those roots. So that's that's all the plants. What I'm gonna do, I think I have a little bit, I'm not sure, do I have a little bit of nutrient solution left? I think there's a little bit left in here. So I might just water them all with nutrient solution. Again, I wasn't doing nutrient solution with all of these. And so now I'm gonna be able to feed them and then they're just gonna take off and yay oh my god okay this is very exciting okay guys i guess that's it well, i'm excited i feel bad like honestly i would have uh transitioned them out of this bin in my living room a while ago i've been having so much trouble when it comes to space in my room when it comes to like new plants in new homes and like where do i put the other plants? happy friday everyone did three videos a week i'm very proud of myself and so the next video is going to be a july favorites i'm very excited about this are there any tips tricks that y'all do with your plants you know obviously i had hiccups especially with the obovana but overall they're doing pretty good thank you guys so much for watching if you made it to the very end thank you guys so much i greatly appreciate it and i'll see you guys later bye